Hi guys, this presentation will show you a few tools to help with conversion optimization. In general, when you want to optimize a website for conversions, I recommend the following steps. First, find what pages you should start optimizing. Then, analyze how users are interacting with those pages. Based on your analysis, come up with a few ideas on what may be wrong with those pages. Conduct a test to see if your proposed solution works. And finally, apply what you learn from testing to your website. The tools that I'm presenting will help you with three of these steps. Let's get started. In your first step, your objective is to figure out what pages to prioritize for conversion optimization. If you were to optimize just one page on the website, which one would it be? What pages will have the greatest impact on overall conversions? To help with this, I recommend using Google Analytics. It's free and most websites already have it installed. If you're lucky, the website that you're working on will have a good amount of historical data already. Otherwise, you may need to wait a few days or even weeks before having statistically significant information. By using Google Analytics, you'll be able to find out what pages have a lot of entrances, meaning pages that users go to directly without visiting the home page, and which of those have high bounce rates. It's also useful to find pages that users visit a lot, but that have high exit rates, meaning it's the last page they visit on a website. If you have conversion funnel set up, such as a checkout process or a sign up process of some sort, you can use analytics to help identify roadblocks. There may be missing information or usability issues that are causing your users to drop off. These are just a few examples of how you can use analytics to identify problematic pages on your website. At the end of step one, you should have a list of pages that you want to start optimizing for conversions. In step two, you want, you want to observe what users do when they come to your website. This is going to help you find out what may be wrong with some of your pages. One tool that can get you started is Crazy Egg. It creates nice heat maps showing where users click. It can also segment different types of traffic, such as users that come through search engines versus users who come from, say, Twitter. With this kind of information, you can see how it will be useful when forming a hypothesis. This is a test we did on the old Blue Fountain Media homepage. The next tool to add to your arsenal is Clicktail. Clicktail does a lot of what Crazy Egg does, but goes a step further. It also tracks mouse movements, not just clicks. You can even watch entire user sessions on video. Now that is impressive. The next tool that will help you analyze usage is 5 Second Test. This nifty website will show your web page to random users for 5 seconds, hence the name, and then you get to survey them. You can collect as many responses as, you, as you'd like and can share the test with your customers to get responses from them as well. Here I'm showing an example of a test done on the Blue Fountain Media website. Our final question to users was to try and remember our company name. Well, as you can imagine, not many remembered it. At the end of step two, you should be able to identify a few things that may be wrong with your pages or that can be improved. In step three, you'll want to gather all of the resources at your disposition and come up with a few solutions to improve conversion rates. In the case of Blue Fountain Media, we felt that our website needed a complete redesign but we couldn't know for sure until we tested this idea out. Step four is where you get to find out if what you think is going to be a better solution will in fact work. The tool that I recommend to start testing is Google Website Optimizer. It will help you compare your proposed solution to what already exists. 
Maybe your proposed redesign is not that great of an idea after all. How would you really know unless you test it out? What's important here is to make sure to let the test run long enough so that you obtain statistically significant data. Testing one page against another is called A-B testing. But don't stop there. Go back to the tools used in uh, usage analysis and see how customers are interacting with your new page. This is a test we ran on the new Blue Fountain Media homepage. You can see that user interaction increased significantly. So did time on page, which we tracked using analytics. We used five second tests to see if, see if most people also had a better understanding of our services thanks to our new homepage. Once you've gathered data on your proposed solution, there should be a number of outcomes that you can act upon. Step five is where you take action. Implement some of the conclusions that come out of testing. That concludes our conversion optimization process for the purposes of this presentation. Ideally, once you get to the end of step five, you should start over again from the beginning. Conversion optimization can have enormous impacts on your business. Thanks to our own conversion optimization on Blue Found Media, we were able to double our conversion rate. Since the relaunch of our new website, we've been able to increase it by another 30% and we're just getting started. That means that without increasing our traffic, we now receive tw twice as many co consultation requests compared to previously. And something else happened, which was unexpected, but very welcome. We now get better quality leads compared to before. So not only did our leads increase, but the quality of our leads increased. As you can imagine, this has had tremendous impact on our business. To recap the tools that I presented, um, to identify what pages to optimize, I used Google Analytics. To analyze usage of these pages, I used Crazy Egg, Clicktail, and 5 Second Test. And for testing, I used Google Website Optimizer, as well as all of the tools mentioned earlier. Thanks, and I hope these tools will be valuable in conducting conversion optimization. Also keep in mind that there are many different ones out there and it's always good to keep trying out new ones.